What does it mean when we confess that Jesus has a reasonable soul? When we say that Jesus has a reasonable soul, we simply mean by that that touching His human nature, He is a duality, He's body and soul as all human beings are, and that that soul is rational. And that, uh, <clears throat> and when we talk about, in that sense, the term soul is virtually interchangeable with the word mind. And God has created us in our image. God Himself is a rational being, and God has planted within the soul or mind of every creature that He has made the capacity for reasonable uh, discourse and thinking. And I know we live in a time that is one of the most anti-rational and anti-intellectual periods of the history of the church. Not that people uh, are opposed to academics or science. Some people love academic pursuits and investigation, scientific inquiry. But it's anti the mind, anti being uh, rational. People think that Aristotle, for example, invented logic. Aristotle didn't invent logic. God did. And that uh, what Aristotle, I mean, Aristotle no more invented logic than Columbus invented America. He discovered it. He, he found it. And, you know, the, the late uh, uh, Christian philosopher, uh, not Van Til, but the other one, uh, Gordon Clark, when he exegetes uh, John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and so on, it's in the NRK, Ain Ho Logos. And, and actually, uh, Gordon Clark interpreted that, or translated it. In the beginning was logic, and logic was with God, and logic was God, in the sense that, the, that rationality has its foundation in the divine mind itself and that that rationality is a communicable attribute of God, that in His creatures we also have the capacity for reasonable thinking. But don't you think also it, it's also trying to say that He was not a human shell with only a divine mind? He had a but human mind. He had a human mind. Right, with all the mind. limitations of human right. thinking. Right. In touching his human nature, he was not omniscient. Touching his divine nature, he was absolutely omniscient. But we, we can't separate those, but we must distinguish them or all kinds of mischief but takes fully place. fully God, fully man, with all the reasonableness of man. Well, I prefer truly God and truly man truly and truly because man. it can be confused. And when you say that Jesus was fully God and fully man, if you mean by that, that that one person was absolutely, totally God and that's all, then you'd be denying His humanity. Or if you say He was fully man, then there's no room for His deity. That's why we like to say vera homo, vera deus, truly God, truly man. You're that's with what, me That's on what that. I meant. That, that's what I meant. Yeah, I knew that's what you meant. <laughs> why, jo why John, Johnny Mac, do you always make me have to define what you meant? John, he's corrected me in a Q&A on this very point before, so I... <laughs> Dr. MacArthur, you spoke in your 2016 Shepherds Conference message about clergy malpractice. Can you tell us what you meant by that? Uh, what year is this? <laughs> yeah. Any failure on the part of a pastor, uh, an under-shepherd of Christ, to lead his church in a way that is not sound in doctrine and practice is in itself a form of clergy malpractice. Clergy malpractice, I, mean, I, I went through a clergy malpractice lawsuit that lasted 10 years ended up in the United States Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled in our favor. Uh, that was a legal 
experience of what the courts called clergy malpractice, and they exonerated, exonerated us from the accusation that we had committed clergy malpractice by preaching a, about sin and judgment, which they said, uh, the, the, the plaintiff said, had exacerbated someone's precondition to feeling guilty that led to that person's suicide, so that we were responsible for his suicide. The lawsuit went for 10 years. It went through all kinds of courts. I gave testimony on the stand in courts. It went to appellate courts. It went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, that is the opposite of clergy malpractice. That, that is doing what you must do, which is to declare the truth in preaching and in practice, uh, that you have to be faithful to the, to the Word of God. And, I mean, where would you even begin to catalog all of the clergy malpractice going on all over the place today, bad theology and bad practice combined together? Uh, it, it is pandemic.